The goal is simple. It's to raise women's voices. Learn a little bit about what you should be thinking about in the future. We had over 300 people who signed up for the one-on-one -on -one counselings today. I think that there is a path forward always to working together with people. And I think sometimes, especially in my profession, in the world of politics, in the world of leading, people sometimes discount the ability to lead quietly and effectively. The assessor's office is a big one. There are 58 counties in the state of California and every single county has one elected assessor in the county. Our job is to look at property taxes and to make sure that we are fairly taxing every single property in San Francisco. One of the big things that we do is that as a result of our work, we bring in a lot of revenue, about $2.6 billion worth of revenue to the city. Often people will ask me, well, what do you do with that money? And I like to share with people what happens to a typical dollar that we collect in property taxes. For every $1 it is that we collect in property taxes, about 65 cents of it goes to support things like our public services, our firefighters, our police officers, our parks, our streets, the cleaning that happens in the city. But I think what most people don't know is about 34 cents of the dollar goes to public education. So it goes to the state of California and in turn gets allocated back to our local school districts. And so this is something that's incredibly important part of what we do in this office. I was able to be successful because I had a lot of people supporting me. It's an interesting place to be, I have to say. My colleagues across the state have been wonderful and have been very welcoming and share their knowledge with me. In my day-to-day -day life, I don't often think about holding that role, being the only Asian American assessor in the state. I really just view it as trying to do the best that I can be, be the best assessor that I can be so that I represent my community well, San Francisco well. By fact of being the only Asian American assessor, I think you also have a responsibility to try to lift up and to try to bring more people on board as well. I hope that by doing the best that you can as an individual, people will start to see that your assessors, your elected leaders, the people who are making important decisions can look like you, can be like you, can be from your background. I grew up with a family uh, where most of my relatives, my aunties, my uncles, my parents were immigrants to the United States. When my parents first came here, they came without any relatives or friends in the United States. They had very little money and they didn't know how to speak English very well. They came to a place that was completely foreign, a place where they had absolutely nobody here to help them. And I can't imagine what that must have been like, how brave it was for them to take that step because they were doing this in order to create an opportunity for their family. So my parents had odd jobs. My dad worked in the kitchens. My mom worked as a seamstress sewing. And as we grew up, my parents eventually had a small business. And so I very much grew up in a family of immigrants where we helped to translate. We went to the restaurant every weekend and helped out uh, rolling egg rolls, eating egg rolls, um, and doing whatever we really needed to to help the family out. It really was an experience growing up in that environment that really helped me to be the person that I am and to view public service the way that I do. One of the events that really stuck with me when I was growing up was actually the Rodney King riots. We lived in Southern California at the time and my parents had a restaurant in Inglewood, California. I can remember smelling smoke, seeing ashes where we lived. It was incredibly scary because we didn't know if we were going to lose that restaurant, if it was going to be burned down, if it was going to be damaged, and it was our entire livelihood. And I remember at the time there were a lot of conversations around what it was that government could do to help create opportunities or prevent people from being able to be more successful. And that stuck with me. It, it stuck with me because I believe that government has a role, a responsibility, the ability to change the outcomes for communities, to create opportunities, to help people go to school, to help people open businesses and be successful. Please wear a helmet. Make sure to be safe. 
and of course to have fun. And then I think as you continue to serve in government, you realize that those convictions and the person that you are really help to inform you. And, it, and so long as you go back to your core and you remember why you're doing what you're doing, you know, I, I think you can't go wrong. It's funny because, you know, I, I never had thought I would, I would do this. I became a supervisor first for the city under very uh, unusual circumstances. And I can remember uh, one day I'm shopping with friends and uh, really not having a care in the world about politics or running for office or being in a public position. And then the next day I'm sworn in and serving on the board of supervisors. For many of us who are going through our public service, it's very interesting, I think, what people view as a leader. Sometimes people say, well, maybe the person who is most outspoken, the person who yells the loudest or who speaks the loudest is going to be the best leader. And I think how I was raised, I like to listen first and I like to try to figure out ways to work with people to get things done. I hope that as time goes on, people see that you can have all sorts of different leaders who operate, whether at the top of city government or within organizations or leading teams, that there are really different kinds of leadership styles that we should really foster because it makes us actually stronger as organizations. Take advantage of all the wonderful information that you have here at the vendor booths, at our seminars, on, and also the one-on-one -on -one counseling. I wouldn't be where I was if I didn't have very strong people who believed in me. And even at times when I didn't believe in my own abilities or my own skills, I had a lot of people who trusted and believed that I either had the passion, the skills to, to do and to accomplish what I did. If there is one thing that I can tell young women, girls who are thinking about and dreaming about the things they want to be, whether it's a doctor, being in politics, running an organization, opening a business, whatever it is, I think it's really to just trust yourself and believe that who you are is enough, that you are enough to make it work and to make things successful.